So you have not fully lived until you have packed up a rooftop tent in the rain. <laughs> but we are alive and well. Hey. You ready to go? Ready to go. It is now time for us to leave Mtunzi camp and Poponyane behind us. Making our way through beautiful orchards and sugarcane fields as we made our way to Hlane National Park. We had a good four hour drive ahead of us, so it was time to just take it easy, soak in the scenery and make our way there. Okay, so we finally made it to Tlane. Let's go check in. We were super excited to visit our first national park for the trip. And having the campsite pretty much all to ourselves meant we could just have a peaceful and relaxing time. Okay, so we are all booked in. We are camping, they've got like complimentary firewood, which is amazing, we're gonna make ourselves a nice fire. And this place actually looks really, really nice. But I'm trying to find Natalie, she's disappeared. Turns out she was hiding around the corner, looking at these beautiful creatures, right by the fence. And our only protection is three strips of barbed wire and a couple sticks. <laughs> we haven't even been here for five minutes and we've just seen five rhinos right at the fence like super super close. super close and it was time again to set up our campsite and although you might think that it gets quite frustrating having to set up camp every single day and break it down every single day there's nothing quite like the rewarding feeling when everything is set up you've got a cozy place to stay you're protected from the elements and you've got somebody amazing to share the experience with but it was time for us to do a little bit of maintenance with all the rain from the previous day, our tent and awning had gotten a little bit wet and we needed them to dry out a little bit. So it's turned out to be the perfect time to air out our tent a little bit. There's a nice breeze and there's a bit of warmth in the air. So just this front section of the mattress ended up getting a bit wet from the water just consistently dripping through. And obviously because that wasn't elevated and pushing the water away, we needed the airflow so we didn't have the other flap down. So it's a bit of a situation, but we know now that if it rains, we keep the gray flap down as long as we can and as much as we can. It'll just prevent the water from entering inside the tent. But otherwise, we're pretty much ready to go. Fire's there, our chairs are out, everything's set up, and it is not even 4.30. So we are set up for a beautiful evening in the bush. We've got the bush right here on our doorstep. We're gonna make an amazing meal and have another amazing night in the bush. With our camp set up, the fire roaring, it was time to get some food in the belly. And what we had in store today was a vegetarian mushroom risotto. I love the versatility of having something like a Dutch oven because you can use it to make stews and, you know, casseroles and things like that. But at the same time, you can use it to bake breads and pastries and all sorts of things. It's such a versatile piece of equipment and it's always worth lugging around. And what's great is because it's a quite a big cavity, you can fit a lot of other things in it. So we can store all of our other pots and pans and things inside of it when we're not using it. But just look at what you can do with it. Everything's ready on our little hot pot. We're gonna go and have a look at the little viewpoint. Go maybe go have a drink at the bar and then come back when this is done in about 30 minutes or so. And then we can settle down for the rest of the evening, watch the sunset and head off to bed because it's been a long day. Eagle, eagle, eagle. <laughs> we always love being able to see wild animals from our campsite and seeing a Wahlberg's eagle being attacked by paradise flycatchers is certainly a unique sighting. It is now time to feast. With final few additions and a good mix up, a hearty delicious meal was done. And there's only one way to finish up a long day in Eswatini. Good company and a couple ice cold sabebes. There's nothing quite like waking up to the sounds of the birds in the bush all around you, especially with the night listening to lions mating in the distance. 
This place is really nice. We didn't have to fight off the rain last night. We didn't have to have any hassles. It was good. Natalie got up at 5.30 in the morning <laughs> to wash dishes and do all the things, but it's that like excited energy. Today we're gonna pack up our camp and we're gonna spend the whole day driving around the park. But I think with the weather the way it is, and considering we saw the five rhino yesterday and we could hear a lion the whole night, I think we're gonna have a good day and I think we're gonna see some cool stuff. So keen to get out there. But first we've got some coffee coming. We got some leftovers from last night to eat for breakfast. And then we can get our asses into gear. Although there are often many chores to do when you're out camping, it's always good to sit down and soak in the scenery and really enjoy your cup of coffee. Really take the time. Otherwise, it's very easy for camping to become a labor of having to set up and break down and wash dishes and cook and do all of those things. And this is also a great opportunity for Natalie to learn just how well the rooftop tent works, how to pack it away and things like that. And that would be a necessary skill because over the next five days, we'd be doing this quite a bit. But as you can see here, it's really good to fold away all the excess fabric. And once you've got it all folded away nicely, the rooftop tent actually compresses down quite small. And I think if Natalie really had to, she could also set up the tent all on her own in case I was injured or something like that. But you know what? Teamwork really does help. Oh, and it's beautiful weather. It's not too hot, not too cold. It's perfect. Hopefully, we're going to see some good game today. Excuse me, Mr. Impala. We're going now. With all the rain and everything happening recently, the bush was lush. And this female rhino and a baby actually surprised us. And you do not want to make a female rhino feel threatened about her baby. Luckily, they moved on by with no problems. Just like this little tortoise. But struggling to find anything else, we did end up finding another mom and baby rhino. So I wouldn't say we had an uneventful drive, but we didn't really see much. A couple buck, lots of rhinos, which is great, and some baby rhinos, which is amazing. But eh, we're taking it easy today. We're gonna maybe make a little bit of food and then go find ourselves somewhere to sit and enjoy the view of the watering hole and get a little bit of relaxing going today. It's really lovely just taking a bit of time, sitting under the tree and watching the elephants swimming and playing around in the water. It's beautiful. We've seen rhino come to the water, we've seen warthogs, we've seen elephants, nyala, impala, a bit of a fight between a rhino and elephant and it just shows you sometimes just sitting still and just letting the things happen around you is the best thing you can do. And we've seen way more sitting here in the past 30 minutes than we did in our whole hours of driving around this morning. So chances are we might just take it easy and just hang out here for a bit. Why not? We're on holiday. After having an amazing lounge in front of the watering hole, it was finally time for us to set up our camp and for Natalie to put her practice to test. Setting up the tent in no time at all. We were really lucky to have such a great campsite, all to ourselves, peaceful and quiet. So unintentionally, it's turned into a little bit of a foodie holiday. We've been doing a lot of nice cooking and just playing around and stuff with the kind of ingredients that we decided to bring along. And I think it's because we've started to try and eat a little bit less meat. So you have to be a little bit more creative about your meals. So bringing through a lot of vegetables and things like that, Often the food ends up looking good, it ends up tasting good, but obviously you've got to use it up quick and you've got to actually use it. And because we don't have that, just like pull into camp, make a fire and bry some vorse and that's it for the night or bry a chop or a piece of steak. We actually have to go through the effort of cooking something and 
once you've pulled the pot out and you've got the gas out and you've got everything there, you might as well make something nice. So <clears throat> it's unintentionally kind of turned out that way, but it's actually been enjoyable. It can very easily become just eating a whole bunch of quick junk food or fast food along the way and not looking after yourself. And especially if we're going to start doing this more and more, we need to start making this more like our normal lifestyle. So we can't just do the, take all the shortcuts. But we do have a couple nice things planned for us while we're here, a couple nice treats. You know, it, it is a holiday and we're going to do some things like some pancakes and bake some bread and do some nice things besides making some nice healthy meals. So I hope you guys have kind of enjoyed watching some of these meals as well and seeing maybe it gives you a little bit of inspiration for your camping trips. It's still something to get used to, not eating meat while out camping, but it wasn't so bad. And Natalie finally taught me how to properly actually fold a wrap. <laughs> so I'm sure if this was useful for me, I'm sure some of you would find this useful too. It's a really handy little technique. Dinner's in. And it's time to go enjoy our little sunset with some sundown as by the waterhole. It's our last night in Tlane. And tomorrow we make our way to Cozy Bay. So we are going to be camping on the banks of a river, well, of a lake. Yeah. Then we're heading to St. Lucia, which is an estuary. It's also going to be really nice. So we're going from the mountainous humidity to the oceanic humidity. But I think it's going to be a nice shift in things. There's still going to be wildlife. There's still going to be a lot of game to see. And a lot of birds to see and it's going to be really nice. Real nice. But let's enjoy our sunset and continue our day of ultimate relaxation. Let's go see what we can see. See what we can see. Hopefully not more rhinos, but more <laughs> rhinos is also okay. With bird books in hand and a beautiful, beautiful sunset awaiting us, it was time to head back to the watering hole to enjoy our last sunset at Lani just soak it in, see what we see and enjoy it. And one of the mother rhinos and her baby from earlier that day also came down to the watering hole to say goodbye to us as we soaked in the final golden rays of sunset before making our way to camp and heading to bed. With it now being our third time packing up our setup and getting ready to go, we had gotten it down to a fine tee. All that was left to do now was to freshen up and hit the road. So we're pretty much ready to go now. We've decided to have a easy kind of morning. We're gonna be having breakfast down at the restaurant. We're just now gonna go have showers, get ourselves ready, everything's packed up. And we wanted to make our lives just that little bit easier making our way through to Cozy Bay so we can have as much time that side to be able to set up, find a nice campsite and enjoy our time while we're there. Thank you so much for watching so far and, in, and I hope you enjoyed our first couple days on this, on this trip and yeah, Swaziland has been amazing and I hope you guys have enjoyed it and gotten to see some of the beautiful scenery out here from the mountains of Belembu out through the forests and everything where we were staying in Poponyane and down through the sugarcane fields and eventually arriving here at Tlane. It's been really amazing. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you on the next adventure. Bye for now. On the next episode of Rome Overlanding, we leave Tlane National Park making our way through to the border to head back into South Africa and make our way to Cozy Bay. But little did we know there'd be something in our way. That's supposed to be the road heading to the border and uh, it's just some rocks. So that's not happening. So please remember to like, subscribe and comment down below. 
I'll see you on the next adventure. Bye for now.